to the wind, I keep the stick at a neutral position and aircraft into wind. Prop blast area is clear, I think. Yep, there's nobody behind us. Stick sort of in an aft position a little bit back. Um, brakes apply. Oil temperature, is it above 50? Yes, we're at 75. Throttle up to 3,800 RPM. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna start turning that dial up to 3,800. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit harder on those brakes. Past it, there it is, 3,800, there we go. Perfect. Now we're gonna check our ignitions. We're gonna take the key and cycle it to left. Watch how much that RPM drops. It dropped about 90 to 80. That's right. Now I'm gonna go back to both. Now I'm gonna go to the right side and hopefully that matches the left, and yep. it does. Beautiful. Now we're gonna go to both. Perfect. Ignition is still up, so voltmeter, we're gonna check, and it's producing 13.7 volts. It's way at the top of the green. It's working great. I'm gonna reduce the power now to 2,000 RPMs. Right. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check our controls. So our control checks will be a left and right. You're gonna visually wanna watch your ailerons respond, so feel free to do it. Yeah. Yeah, looking Perfect. good. And front and back and have a peek at your elevator when you're doing that. You want to see it operating the way you're telling it to work. Perfect. Nice. And do your rudders also and look back. So rudder left and right. It's responding properly. Yeah. Next thing we're going to do is flap. So flap one, flap two, and 50 degrees is way up here. I never use 50. Right. 50 is crazy. 30 degrees is what we normally use for landing. 15 for takeoff. Gotcha. So there's our 15 degree first notch for takeoff. Our trim is electronic in this aircraft. The indicator is right there. It tells us we're in the middle. If we had to adjust it, there's a nose down, nose up button. Perfect. Uh, da, da, da. Ignition, we double check that it's on both. Yeah. Uh, transponder is on 1200. I have to change that. It says altitude and 1200, but this is automatic now, so it just does its own thing. Gotcha. Choke is off. Choke is off. Instruments. Yeah, engine instruments. They're all in the green except for the oil one. The oil one will come up by the time we're ready to take off. Okay. Uh, fuel quantity. We have 48 liters in your tank. That's like two hours of flying. No problem, Perfect. at least. Uh, canopy is closed and locked. Yep. Perfect. And there's no warnings appearing on the screen. If there was, there's a message center and it would be flashing. Okay. All right, so you can take that list and put it away. And if you want to start taxiing us that way. Sure. Go for it. Do you have control? No. So I can give you some throttle. Perfect. Try not to push the brake. Well, you could use the brake a bit, but there you go. All right. Indo traffic advisory, uh, power tail to whiskeys, uh, taxiing across uh, 2608 on Bravo. So we're just going to roll right out there. All right. Interval traffic, Juliet, Kilo Yankees, backtracking 31. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go out to this runway and backtrack all the way to the beginning of it. So we're good to go. I was scanning the sky, but you're doing the right thing. If you want to get the hang of playing with the throttle, feel free to do yeah, it. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. It's a real, real nice system. I spoiled myself with this aircraft, so <laughs> anytime I get into, I got another plane, it's a, a Kit Fox on floats, a tail wheel. Oh my God. But it's a, it's a push stick, right? Right. And once you get spoiled with this, when I get in that thing, it's work now. I can imagine. Because you got to sit there and, and you're, when you're getting hit with thermals and your hand's going rrr, rrr, right. rrr, on the throttle, right? That's right. This thing, that won't happen, right? It's just set, it locks. and So there's a little bit of a turnaround over at the end there on the right side. Okay. So we'll just kind of utilize that. The turning radius of this Vector Sports Star is terrible. Oh, okay. So... It's like a lot of full rudders to do any turns you want to do. It's, uh, I'm going to try to customize and change that this summer because it drives me crazy. Right. A DC-10 could turn quicker than this thing can. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, so we'll just kind of go way out there. Don't worry, the wing's not going to hit anything. Like, you're okay. Okay. I'd keep going a little bit straighter. Now go full left rudder. That's right. And if you hold that full left in, it should bring us right towards the center line now. Perfect. So do you want to try to do the takeoff? I can try. All right, yeah. I'm here, so don't worry about it. All right. Add yourself a bit of power to help you around this corner. So what you're going to find is we have right now, if you look at that windsock, if you remember any of the any of the learning you would have done or any of the books, that's about almost 15 knots. That's, ser that's some serious wind right now. Yeah. So first thing first, let's get us right into the center line. So okay. add some right pedal. And it's always deceiving, right? Because your side of the aircraft and my side are a little bit different. That's but right. the center is right there. That's it right there. Okay. And the way you know is put your head in the center and have a look. Okay? Gotcha. Okay. All right. So the wind is coming a little bit from the right. So we're already going to want a touch of right stick. Okay. Now, um, going to be quite, quite simple, quite straightforward. All we're going to be doing is going to be going full power with this thing. Drop your heels to the floor so they're no longer on the brakes. Be prepared. There's going to be significant yaw pulling you to the left. Okay. So you're going to have to adjust with right pedal. Okay. It's going to lift off really fast All right. because it is a light aircraft and the power of the engine is very strong for a light aircraft. Perfect. It might shock you. I'm here on the controls to make sure you don't really mess up, <laughs> but just gentle. We want to climb out at 65 knots is our target. Okay. Airspeed indicator is obviously right there. Your altimeter is right here. Perfect. That's all you really need for takeoff is those two things. All right. So it's up to you if you want me to operate the throttle or not. If you want to try it. I can try it. All right. So you're going to have to squeeze to unlock it and then push like that. Gotcha. So I'm going to make the radio announcement. All right. Edenville traffic, Julia Kilo Yankees on the roll, 3-1. Straight climb out, 2,000 feet. All right. All right. That's right. Heels to the floor. Squeeze the little ball in and press all the way in. All the way to the wall. Add some right pedal there. That's right. And gently lighten the nose. Just a touch up on that stick. That's it. Nice. Sweet. All right. 65 knots. Nose forward. Nose forward. Nose forward. There you go. Forward, forward on that nose. That's it. Good job. Beautiful. That wind really caught you there. Huh? Yeah, it did. All right, so now I'm going to lower the flaps. The whiskey, backtrack, flaps are clean. Pull into the climb by just gently pulling back on that stick. We want to climb at 65 knots. So remember, our stick is responsible for our speed. Our stick is responsible for our speed. Our throttle is responsible for our altitude. Right. So gently pull back. A little bit more, a little bit more. That's it. There you go. Now you got the climb happening. Okay, we're going to get this rust shaken off of you. <laughs> It'll come. We're coming up on 800 feet. We'll climb this up to 2,000. All right. Approaching altitude. There you go. Now, there's a lot of thermals this time of day, right? Yes, that's right. But keep in mind, like, it's, it looks like a beautiful day, but for a pilot, these kind of days are generally our enemy. Right. There's, there's no freaking clouds in the sky, so we've lost all that thermal protection. Exactly. So there's 2,000 feet. Push that nose forward to level off. That's right. We'll level off. Wait for that airspeed to come alive out of the white arc. Now let's reduce the power. So unlock the ball. Pull back. Yeah, that's okay. Yep, yeah, there you go. All right, now just use the dial now to set your... I'll, I'll talk to you about this. So push sure. that nose forward. All right. Nose is good. Airspeed is good. We're above 60, so we're safe. Let some airspeed build, holding the plane level. Okay. Now, get comfortable with the level position. Now start using this to... Actually, you're pretty decent RPM right there for cruising. Anywhere from 4,600 to 5,000 RPM is yeah. perfect for cruising. Perfect. All right, so pick an arbitrary altitude you want to fly at, and feel free to go in any direction you want. I'm just going to make a few radio broadcasts to let people know what we're up to. Perfect. All right. Edenville traffic, Julia Kilo Yankee, departing your zone to the northwest, 2,500 feet. 
All right, so a little bit about this area. This area here, this is Wasega Beach right over here. Okay. Directly in front of us is Collingwood Blue Mountain. Over there is another very busy airport called Collingwood Airport, so we don't want to fly into their zone. Okay. So let's make a left turn. Uh, you can make a left or right. You can go that, whatever way you want. Sure. Uh, Papa Delta Whiskey, Supreme Room, 31 to the west. So you're in a gentle climb right now. So just push that nose forward just a touch. So let's check to see if the trim is set first. Okay. So the way you do that is just remove a little bit of pressure. So the trim is going down, right? That's right. All right, so you're gonna give a tap or two to that up. Up there. That's right. So it's climbing now. Give another tap. No, down is this oh, way. Okay. Got it. that's it. So you're just gonna play with that until you find that little balance spot where you don't have to have any stick pressure to fly level. That's pretty much there. Perfect. All right, so as long as you don't move it for our duration of our flight, it should be fine. Perfect. Did it just climb again on you? I think it did. So you wanna, that's right, give it one tap and then that should be good there. That's it. All right, so now you have positive, everything's nice and positive going forward. It's not up nor down. Right. Good starting point. So we're at an altitude of 2,700. Uh, it's your plane. I'm here to make sure you don't die. So you can do whatever you want. Uh, just kind of let me know what you're up to. All right. Well, let's try bank some turns because I haven't gotten a chance to do that in a while. Let's go for it. So if you're going to make any turn, yeah. before you make the turn, you want to clear it visually. Right. So if you want to make a left turn, I want to see your head do one of these all the way around. Look behind you. Make sure there's nobody sneaking up beside us. Okay. Then make your turn. Calling the traffic. Right. This is November Echo Charlie. 2,500 feet above the entrance to the Nautilusaga River on following with Mega Beach back to the airport. You're in a gradual climb. Just touch that nose down. There you go. Your vertical speed indicator right here will give you your immediate knowledge if you're climbing or descending. So 3,000 feet is nice on a day like today because it's keeping us high above the thermals. Right. Once we get down in that 2,000 foot area, it's going to be really bumpy. Okay. All right, so now you're on course for Barry. Barry's right in front of us. You can see Lake Simcoe there, that white ice out there. Yeah. So you probably noticed when you started your climb how quick this aircraft was changing Surely, yeah. its pitch, its roll, hence what I was talking about. It's light. You're right. So when they're light, you got to tame it. Yeah. You really just got to tell it what to do. You're fighting it, right? That's right. I wasn't expecting that. Like a, even a glider, right? Like a glider soars. Yes. Right? They, it's rare you're going to have any of that nonsense right. going on. But this thing, since it's such a tight, small little package, short little wingspan, and a strong engine in a small little aircraft, it's That's squirrely. Right. It's true. The traffic advisory, pump Delta Whiskey, is uh, clearing to the uh, west, climbing to 2,000 feet to uh, 4,500. So that guy left just now out of Edenvale, which is here, and okay. he's going that way to the west. He's no threat to us. Okay. There's some thermals again. Ooh. <laughs> Rock and roll day. <laughs> Approaching altitude. So I'm sure you've flown in the summer then, right? Yes, I have. Yeah, so that's generally when it's really turbulent. Yes. I didn't expect these up this high. No, definitely not. Wow, that almost felt like being behind another plane. <laughs> uh, everything's flooding from all the winter melting here, like this. 
entire swamp is bleeding over onto all these farmlands. It really is. You're thinking about a career in aviation. I am. Good for you. Well, thank you. Now, are you guys different than uh, Barry Flying Club? Yep. All right. Yeah, Barry Flying Club. Uh, they have uh, a sim they have a sports star as well. Okay. That they train on. Um, I don't know. How, how would I describe it? We're, we're just different businesses, like McDonald's versus a Burger King, right? Gotcha. We both sell burgers. It depends on which one you like better. <laughs> Where I, I do things a little bit differently, I don't I don't charge people for run-ups, nonsense like that. Okay. Because uh, I think back to when I started flying, uh, and I remember being uh, in my teens, and it was damn expensive, and you're watching the clock, and you're sitting on a runway, right. and you're burning 25 minutes to sit there, and I resented that. Absolutely. So when I got into this business full-time four years ago and opened a flight school, I said, I'm going to be the flight school that starts charging after the run-up. Well, that's wonderful. So with all the shaking hands, doing the walk around, I don't charge for that. Oh, that's great. Do the run-up, then the clock starts. Right. When we're ready to take off. And I do my best to not do any flight training at the airport when it's busy there. So even if you were my student there and you came on a Sunday in the summer and it was packed, yeah. I would fly to Barry. We'd fly to Barry and do our circuit training there. Really? Because Barry's right here, right? Right. Because that way you're not landing and waiting for another backtracking airplane. Exactly. I want to get maximum circuits in in an hour, and I want people to leave as quick as possible so they brag about their experience. Absolutely. That's my philosophy. Right. Other flight schools are not so much that way. No. They want to bank the <laughs> maximum dollar on everything and charge it for 20 minutes ground time and X, Y, Z. Of course. Yeah, I, I try to approach it a little bit differently. Oh, it's wonderful. Well, so far it's working. <laughs> I find my, my full-time students are very happy with it. I can imagine. The only complaints I ever get are people who haven't soloed in the time they want. But that's all on them. Oh, right? right, exactly. Some people get into this and they, they watch YouTube videos and there's some, some jackass on YouTube flight instructor out of the U.S. that says, if you haven't soloed in hour 10, you're being ripped off. Are you kidding me? And I'm a, as a flight instructor, I say, you're on glue. You're crazy. Oh, my God. One time have I, I've seen a person that could solo in 10 hours, and, and I've been doing flying for 25 years. Well, right. One time, and that was the son of a pilot who grew up on his dad's lap okay. flying, and he had 10 hours of flight experience with a real instructor, and of course he could solo. Exactly. But 10 hours, that's not enough to absorb air law and all the stuff. And I couldn't agree with you more. Feel free to go anywhere you want. Yeah. Do whatever you want with the plane. Uh, right. Just don't invert us, please. <laughs> all right, let's go left. Yeah, sure. Whatever you want. Don't even have to ask. Just clear it. Go. I'm a safety passenger. That's my job today. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Memories of the summer coming back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the cool things about flying ultralights too, at least getting into it early on in training, is that you could bank 10 hours. It's much cheaper exactly. than flying your typical PPL training. That's right. And at least for 10 hours, you save a lot of money, exactly. right? Exactly. I mean, a Cessna 152, I'm paying 250 or so for yep. an hour. Plus tax. Exactly. Right? Yeah. That's why I saw this. I was like, wow. Yep. Shot. My regular training rate's 190 an hour. Okay. But that's that's wet, and like I said, I start the clock really after after that run up. Right. So that that rate there was 15 minutes. Back. That the other places are going to charge you for, right? <laughs> right. So you're getting an hour and 15 minutes for 190. Amazing.
And I don't know, I'm biased because I'm flying in an advanced ultralight, but I know that this makes people better pilots. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Because when you have to respect the weather the way you do in this thing, that's right. Everything else is easy. Hey, you have good altitude control. Thank you. I'm so used to the first time I go flying with somebody just constantly talking about try to maintain altitude. Right. So it's a relief. <laughs> just take me a moment there just to get yeah. my bearings again. Oh, of course. Uh, even if it's a real bad, like... Like January, the weather was pretty poor this year. I can, yeah. And, and I didn't do a lot of flight training in January. And even then, with many years of experience and thousands of hours, I still get rusty. I get up and I'm like, oh, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. I got to remember how to do this. Exactly. Can you try uh, getting a rate? Go for it. <laughs> Anywhere you want to go. really surprised we're getting thermals at 3,000 feet. I know. It's negative three outside. There was a couple times uh, during the summer back in 2017 or 2016 and uh, we were doing gliding and we went up to 4,000 feet in a glider and we were still getting hit by thermals. We were having troubles actually landing. Wow. It was ridiculous. That's cool. Yeah, see, that was a great turn, dealing with all the thermals and everything, and you're keeping it, Thank keeping you. it honest. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, so you're you're obviously feeling the difference. How a low wing plane is different than the 150s, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. One real cool thing is the fact that this is a bubble canopy. We don't have to do those ridiculous sweeping turns it's, to clear. We exactly. just got to turn our head. That's right. The only drawback is you can't see straight down. Right? Well, right, but still, even that, it's just, it's liberating. Yeah. Being able to see everything. I got spoiled with the gliders, and then once I got to the 70, or uh, yeah. 152, I was like, oh my god, I feel like I'm in a cage. Yeah. I, I know what you meant about the, uh, the 172, sorry, the 172. I yeah. flew it once, I think back like two or three years ago. And it, you're absolutely right. It is a bus. Yeah. It's a big old. Yeah. Like, ah, ah. <laughs> like the way you move the control on it, you'll move it That's... four inches and the plane just starts doing <laughs> slow motion. Exactly. This thing, you just go like this. That's right? right. And it's so responsive. Yeah. Uh, left turn. Go for it. Sure. You're the boss. So part of the reason why we're getting bumped around a little bit, I didn't realize until now, I just looked at the computer, we're getting 28 knot wind. Oh. That's pretty serious, coming from that direction. It is. Now it dropped to 19, but it was getting a 28 knot there. Yes. Yeah, this feels everything. Oh yeah. So what I was referring to you on, if you were to go to do flight training and they offer uh, to do it on the G1000 suite, it would look like, oh geez, let me get it set up for you here. Sure. Like that. Oh my goodness. So I don't generally teach people on this unless they're already pilots and they want to get used to that. Right. Because there is a psychology that's missing there. All you have is numbers to look at. You're not looking at a dial with a needle anymore. Exactly. So people tend to make weird reactionary things with the stick, especially when it comes close to danger areas. Right. Where your brain's not putting together the numbers quick enough, but the needle, you can always tell what it's doing, right? Gotcha. Interesting. So if 
the school's offering you the G1000, that's what you'll be training on right there. I see. Go back to what you know. Yeah. Interesting. All right, right turn. Go for it. All right. Yeah, it's so smooth right now up here. It is. Yes, when I say that, the thermals are going to come back <laughs> up and bite us. ever want to find out you're alive, you do a solo flight on a 35 degree summer day. Oh my god. Super humidity and you'll find out you're alive. <laughs> you'll be bouncing off the top. Oh my god. Upside down yeah. almost. <laughs> Wishing you decided to never lift off the ground. <laughs> it's true. So in this aircraft's uh, pretty much comparable to a 172 or the Cessna 150s in speed. Right now we're doing 82 knots. We're not pushing it. We're only at uh, 4,700 RPM. Right. If we push it up to 5,200 RPM, we'll be cruising at close to 100 knots. Okay. Um, if I was to take this aircraft and fly it far away, like say I was going to do a trip to Florida with it, sure. I would spend a half hour on the ground loosening the propeller adjusting the blade angles okay. with a protractor and I would get maybe 115 knots cruise out of it by changing it. Really? But what suffers is your climb performance because now you have a different pitch prop. Sense. Right? Um, if you're really fancy and had an extra 10 grand, you could buy an adjustable prop and put it on the front of this where you just turn the dial and it switches for you, right? Yes. But for performance of an aircraft, what more do you want, right? Unless, true. unless you want to get into the 250 knot range, but. Very true. You'll notice that the rudders on this aircraft are not demanding at all. No. You not barely not. have to touch them. Uh, that's just because of the design of the aircraft, mostly. It's got a tiny rudder. It doesn't need a lot of rudder authority. Um, so, for the most part, I find a person could fly this thing all day and only use the rudders for landing and takeoff. Really? Yeah. Unless you're doing real tight turns where the rudder's not necessary. Yeah. It's going to follow the nose most of the time. And if you look, it's, it's yeah, in there. it is. I barely have to. Have exactly. It's just a little touch. Exactly. Or unless you're going to do forward slips and whatnot, right? Right. And there they come back. <laughs> I can't believe there's not more air traffic. I don't see anybody. I know. There was a lot this morning. I think the winds are scaring people off because they're calling for like upwards of 20 knots yeah. this afternoon, like later this afternoon. That's probably why. Most pilots don't like to lift off the ground in small aircraft unless it's 15 knots or below. Right. And I get it. Most people do less than 20 hours a year if it's recreational pilots. Right. Not that you'd be able to see it from here, but we're about to fly over top of the Elmvale Jungle Zoo. <laughs> really? There's a zoo down here with giraffes and zebras and elephants and everything. No oh, way. There's another aircraft right there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's the property right there. Yeah, with a green roof there. Yeah. So that whole bush and everything is, uh, they got tigers and everything. No kidding. Leaving altitude. Approaching altitude. <laughs> I don't know what the heck they do with a giraffe in the winter time. I don't uh, know. 
I don't know if that's just my ignorance. I don't know if they can handle the cold. I don't know. No, you're, I, I think you're right. I don't think they can. Maybe they ship it off to an indoor place for the winter. I don't know. Possibly. That wind's really, it's starting to push us this way, right? Yes, it it's, is. it's smacking the tail, pushing the nose, yawing yeah. us, right? So that's where you fight it with the rudder by giving the rudder some kicks back, right? Right. I think you can handle landing this thing. Really? Yeah, if the thermals don't hit us too bad in like base and final, I think you can handle it. Wicked, I can't wait. I'll talk you through it, of course. Of course. I left this little thing up there as a reminder of what a circuit looks like. Okay. Now I find even, the, since you don't have 20 hours experience, I'm. I'm just going to explain it anyways. I'm okay. going to assume you don't know this stuff, right? No. All right. So in order to land at an airport, we have to enter into what they call the circuit. Right. The circuit exists generally a thousand feet over the ground at any airport. Right. If you don't know a particular airport, odds are it's a left-hand circuit. It's to be flown in a left-hand direction. Okay. 90%, 95% of circuits at every airport in the world is done in a left-hand pattern. Okay. Hence what we see right here. It's a left-hand loop. Okay. Purple is the runway in this picture. All right. So if I was to take this off and line it up to the airport we're flying, we're going to be going that way. You can't see it yet, but it's off in that direction. Okay. The runway we're going to be landing on is 3-1, which is pointing that way. Okay. In order for us to enter into the circuit, we must be at 1,700 feet, because that's 1,000 feet above the ground. Right. And we can only enter where the dotted lines are here or here. Okay. So it wouldn't make sense for us to enter in on the downwind. That means we'd have to fly to Collingwood, turn left, and then fly into the downwind. Okay. We would want to fly into the airport like this, 1,700 feet. Now cross over the center of the runway at 1,700 feet. Make a left turn into the downwind, then a left for base and a left for final. Okay. So that's our circuit entry. The airport we're going to is still off to the sort of 11 o'clock direction, Tia. All right. You're headed in the right direction. I wouldn't lower altitude yet, because okay. if we go down, we're going to get beat up. Right. And we still got 10 minutes, so we got time. Okay. But we're, we're just kind of talking you through what we have to expect when it's time to enter into that circuit. Right. Uh, when it comes to radio procedures, I don't, don't expect you to understand them at all yet, <laughs> but there's, we announce as a pilot coming to an airport, arriving at an airport, crossing over the airport, and then every turn. Okay. So that's when announcements are to be made. If I was going to put, I'd put little X's on every turn. And that's where radio announcements are made. In the case of here, if we were going there right now, I would say Eden Vale traffic. Sports star India Juliet Kilo Yankee is six miles northeast of that field at 3,000 feet, going to descend to circuit height, cross overhead the field, and join a mid-left downwind for runway 31. Okay. It's a mouthful. It is. You're going to learn that in 25 hours. Oh, gosh. Right? Okay. That's the hard thing I have when I teach people, teaching them the radio, because it's, I want you to learn how to fly first. Right. And then uh, it's hard to absorb this while you're flying. Right. But I'm giving you just a rundown, right? Right. Because you will get a chance to watch the video afterwards, and it, if I can give you any pointers to help you in your career, that's great. Oh, amazing. So you might be able to start making out where the airport is. See this big forested area here? Yeah. Just past it, there's a clearing, and you can almost see a paved 
is a the paved taxiway. It's going in that direction. I think I see it. It's hard to make out because you're not familiar with the area and right. it's your first time up in the air here. I'm just not sure if what I'm seeing is the correct yeah. area. Um. Well, why don't you, I'm just trying to think, why don't you try doing a sharper right turn and I'm just going to give you uh, an idea of how you're doing for a, a regimented turn. Not losing altitude. Let's do a 360 to the right. Sure. Keeps it interesting when I order up some thermals for you, right? Yeah. Nice. Okay, turn can't get any better than that. That's signal traffic. Also, Julia Zulu is approaching five miles from the east. Um, sending the circuit altitude. I'm going to cross over the midfield. Enter mid, downwind, 3 1, full cross, deep And Edeville traffic, Sports Star India, Julia Kilo Yankee, also five miles to the northeast at 3,000 feet and looking for traffic. Yeah, I have you in sight here at my 3 o'clock, uh, 2.30, 2 o'clock. Alright, so when I heard he was 5 miles and we're 5 miles, we're damn close to each other. Yeah, so which way should we go? To the right. There's a ski hill behind me. Uh, Julia Kilo Yankee, can you say again? Our golf golf, Julia Zulu, is directly between you and the ski hill. Um, you look almost east of. Roger, Julia Kilo Yankee. I wish this guy would tell me his altitude. <laughs> One of the test questions you're going to come across whenever you go to do your pilot license is how do you scan the sky with your eyes to look for other aircraft? Okay. And what the way that it's done? Block, block, gotcha. block, block. It's going to try to trick you. Flight instructors might not describe it properly, and they might think, send your eyes like this. Oh, Don't no. do that. You'll never see anybody. Right. Block, scan it. Block, scan it. So like a grid. That's right. Okay. Imagine the sky is a grid. All right. No, that was a great turn. Well, that was a great you. turn, and then that guy screwed me up with the whole being right next to us <laughs> type okay. thing, and I still don't see him. No, I don't either. All right, so let's do a turn towards the airport. Okay, so to the left. You're going to be doing a left turn. I'm going to make an announcement to them so they know what we're doing. Okay. Eatonville traffic, Julia Kilo Yankee, five miles to the north. East of the field, 3,000 feet, descending to Circuit Heights across overhead the field to join the mid left downwind. 3 1. All right. So right over there. Okay, I think I see what you mean. Yeah, so angle towards that, and then we're going to start our descent. So we're going to have to drop down to 1,700 feet. Okay. Be prepared for it to start getting rough on your way down. So sure. you're going to want to probably start reducing some throttle as you go down. That's right, just turn to the left. And you can even reduce it to right off. Any email traffic, this is Golf Golf Julia Zulu, just about to cross over the field at Circuit Heights for uh, mid entry to the downwind, 3 1, full stop. Even All the way? You could if you want. Up to you? Well, the only danger, if we keep this on too much, we're going to be going pretty fast through these thermals. Gotcha. So I would reduce it even more. I like to do my descents, if it's thermally, between 80 and 90 knots. So I'd pull back on that stick a little bit to slow us down, and then just reduce power. Because this is what you're going to have to do on your descent anyways to land, is right. balance your speed control with your stick. That's right, so just play with the stick for your speed control. Okay. So far the thermals aren't kicking our ass yet. No, not yet. So you got the airport in sight, right? Right there? And he built off the Gulf Julia Zulu is now directly See this over forest? the field. Yeah. Right past the forest. Uh, okay. The field. I think so, yeah. Downwind, You're going towards it. You're a little bit off. I'll turn that way a little bit more. A little bit off. Because we want to cross over the center. 
There, now you're pointed oh, right see. towards it. I see what you mean. I totally missed that. Traffic goes through Zulu's turning down wind. Three one full stop. So when you get to 1,700 feet, you're going to want to turn your power back on and add it to maybe 4,800 RPM. Okay. Altitude. There you go. There's your altitude. Level right. off here and add power. And just screw it in. Oh, okay. That's it. And try not to sink any further. Pull back on that stick a little bit. Altitude. All right, so make a nice turn to the right, and we're going to go That's straight over altitude. top of the long runway like that. Okay. So we're somewhere here where this dotted line is. Okay. And we're going to go straight over it. Nice. Sweet. Once we get over top of the runway, this is a chance for the pilot to reconfirm that the wind is moving in the direction we think it is. Okay. By looking at the wind sock, I know it's challenging and tough because there's a lot of thermals kicking our ass now. Yeah. The wind is moving this way, so we're good for runway 3-1. Okay. I'm going to make a radio announcement. Sure. Edaville traffic, Juliet Kilo Yankee is overhead the field. Join the mid-left downwind, 3-1. Yeah, it's getting fun, isn't it? It is. Okay, so I'm looking at about 15 to 17 knots on that windsock. It is straight out. Okay. This is going to be exciting. Oh, dear. And Eastville traffic goes to Zulu's turning final. 3-1, full stop. Email. All right, so whenever we pass the runway by about three quarters of a mile, that's when we want to make our left turn into the downwind. Okay, so shall we start? Yeah. Okay. Eastville traffic, Julia Kilo Yankee is turning mid left downwind. 3-1, full stop. Awesome. So right around here, you're going to parallel the runway, level off, and go this way. To okay. the, nope, to the right. Oh, to the right now? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to fly in this direction now. Okay. So we're a little bit tight. Yeah, Bring it are. over this way. Okay. There you go. All right. So right around here, we're going to start turning base. Base is going to be 90 degrees in that direction. Okay. Peterville traffic, Julia Kilo Yankee turning left base, 3 1, full stop. Still holding our 1700 feet. Very nice. I wouldn't get any sharper than that. That's... Altitude. All right, so we're going to level off here. Okay. I'm going to reduce this quickly for you, okay? Because right. we're a little bit tight. So pull back on that stick. We're okay. going to slow the plane down. We want to get us into the white arc. That's our, our flap area. Flaps, good. Okay, nose forward, nose forward. Forward. Yeah, we need our speed of 65. There we okay. go. Flap one, flap two. All right, so pull back on that stick to maintain 65, but if you want to go faster, push it forward. Okay. And Edaville traffic, Julia Kilo Yankees turning final. 3 1 for a full stop. All right, we've overdrifted a bit. Yeah. Just bring us back over to the left a bit. I'll work the power for you, okay? Okay, sounds good. So our power is responsible for altitude control. Our stick is responsible for our airspeed. If you want to go slower, you just pull back towards your belly. That's right. So we're getting a little bit low, so I'm going to give you some altitude by giving you power. Okay. Pull back just a touch more to slow us down. We want to get 65. That's it. Very nice. And Edenville traffic, off to layer Zulu's backtracking uh, 2 six. And clear the active. No. That's it. Yeah, it's a little challenging right now. It's windy. It is. And thermal. All right, you're getting closer to center line now. All right, I'm gonna start reducing the power. Okay. So be ready to react by pushing that nose down to maintain that airspeed of 65. That's it. Now, I'm not on the stick. My hand is on it for emergencies, but I'm not doing anything. So okay. Just letting you know, you have control. Okay. That's it. So I'm killing the power now. We're just going to glide. Okay. We're still not quite in ground effect yet. Okay. Here's ground effect. Pull back on that stick. Fly the runway. Okay. Keep flying, 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 flying. Look down at the end of the runway, and we use our pedals. Ah, look at that. Good for you. Thank you. 
I gave you a little bit of assistance just by going like this twice. Other than that, you landed it. Thank you. That's you did quick. the pedals, you did it all. Good for you. Speedbelt traffic, Gulf Julia Zulu's oh, clear of sorry. Okay, <laughs> this, this plane is tough to get used to with that. So what I generally do is I'll lift the nose up like this, okay. get the wheel pressure off the front wheel, okay. and the steering is not so drastic. See That's that? That's right. Once you keep the weight on the nose, then it's all over the yeah. place. All right, so we're just going to taxi down to this runway over here, and then we're just going to backtrack towards the hangars. All right. That was awesome. You did well. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely, if I were you, I would not quit your dream of being a pilot. You're a natural. You're good at it. Oh, thank you so much. Some people just don't have it. You're not that person. You have it. You can do it. Thank you so much. It's great, too. I, I always got to look over. I never noticed you squeezing the stick, and the people who are squeezing the stick are too nervous. You were tight on it a few times, but that's natural for somebody with limited hours yeah but you weren't white knuckling like right and that to me is a sign of somebody that's got a lot of fear to overcome and it might be a harder thing to become a pilot right i didn't see a shaking or anything so that's you have yeah you, you were cool you were cool and calm with everything when that's good that's really good thank you so much it really means a lot Eight of L traffic, Julia Kilo Yankees, clear, 3-1, backtracking, 2-6. All right, so see that windsock? See how yeah. straight it's out? Take yeah. the stick, bring it over there. Okay, gotcha. That's what I was talking about earlier. You don't want it lifting our wing up. Right. Oh, my ears actually didn't equalize that time. Neither did mine. <laughs> that was a big pressure change. So we're going to apply some brake here. Okay. Oh, yeah, we'll go off to the left. Interbell traffic, Juliet, Kilo Yankees, clear, 2-6 on the apron. All right, so you're just going to go and taxi us past building K and then down that way. All right.